psychoeducation can be, I think, often a false therapy. It makes the therapist often feel better than the client. The big danger here, and I think this is very rife at the moment, is that we can teach people into feeling better. And I think that's bullshit, particularly for this clientele. It doesn't mean there isn't a place for psychoeducation, but psychoeducation can be, I think, often a false therapy. It makes the therapist often feel better than the client. And then the client's in a position of having to either reject the psychoed or feel completely unheard and unresponded to or compliantly agree, in which case you have a pretend relationship. A pretend relationship. We need to not collude with hiding <coughs> because hiding is a big part of the shame response and I think self-hate leads to a lot of hiding. What are the signs of hiding? Well, there are obvious signs of shame, gaze averted, uh, hunching, soft voice, silence, etc. But there are less obvious signs of shame, uh, avoiding subjects, intellectualizing, attacking, getting angry, etc. They've adapted uh, so they don't look ashamed. We often don't see it, so you have to guess. The most important thing, I think, is to create the space where we allow a safety for them to be able to present what is personal to themselves and for us to receive that and respond to that in a way that recognises that. This is extremely difficult because a lot is hidden. Encourage but don't push. And be aware of subtle disjunctions and invite exploration and repair. Encourage but don't push. Invite exploration and repair. Be wary of big positive words like proud of yourself. My client D, she had done something that I thought was amazing. I said, you must be proud of yourself. And she started to retch in front of me. It was way too far for where she lives in her self-hatred, even though she was a lot better and had done something really amazing. This was unacceptable. She couldn't take it in and she literally started to retch.